Welcome to the Ocean Cruises podcast hosted by Andy H. This week we are speaking to Laura and Ross from the YouTube channel Sailing Holly Blue. Laura and Ross along with their two kids are from the UK and started their cruising life two years ago where they left the UK and headed to Greece on their Bavaria 42. Laura is from a competitive fitness background and now runs an online fitness coaching business from their boat, training people all over the world and helping them improve their lifestyle. They are full-time homeschool teachers to their two kids and are currently cruising the beautiful waters of the Aegean Sea. We talk about their experiences on transitioning to boat life, the lessons they've learned from sailing with a family full-time and how they maintain their lifestyle. You can learn more about Laura and Ross's adventures on their YouTube channel, Sailing Holly Blue. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and download the audio on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Enjoy! How many, yeah, yeah, how many islands are there? They, they reckon if you, go to, if you went to one yeah. island every day, what no, was one, that? You, apparently, the Greek islands, you can go to a different beach every day for 17 mm. years. Yeah. Like, really? literally, so, yeah, yeah, it's oh, crazy. So you've got a long time in Greece. Well, maybe, yeah. <laughs> there's no rush. <laughs> yeah, there's no, no rush to go anywhere. But, yeah. you know, things get samey, don't they, after a while. A so, bit. yeah, areas, I would say, because we've done loads of the of the Dodecanese, loads of the Cyclades, and we haven't ventured over to the Ionian yet, so that's... Well, I passed through that on the cards. Like, on my first trip. Oh, you did, yeah. Yeah, yeah Ross has seen it, but... um. We haven't, and we're, we're hoping that um, this season we might head over that way That's because the, the mm. Meltemi obviously comes just rattling down the, mi- the middle of all the islands, and we're hoping we might get a little bit of a breather from it because... It can be a bit... Rel- the Meltemi is... Relentless. It's predict- quite predictable, but it's relentless. When you're yeah. at anchor, just in, you know, 30 knots of wind for days on end. It can yeah, get a so bit can... tiring. And with the kids as well, that. yeah, you want you want the kids to be able to just jump off a bit more, you know, that can... So yeah. we're, we're going to see how it goes. But um, obviously, I, when I got on the boat for the first time, had zero sailing experience. And uh, <laughs> I landed in M- June, Mykonos June in July? June. And, uh, Late June. You, t- you can tell the story. But... And that was when the mail team just kicked in. And I went to the port in Mykonos. <laughs> And they wouldn't let us, um, you know, more up there. So we went to one of the south beaches. It got up to 35 knots. Yeah. I went and picked Laura up, Laura and the kids up from the airport. I don't think I'd ever been on anchor <laughs> Took before. Took the tender over to the, the boat and I didn't say anything. And Laura just thought it was normal. But yeah. I was like, yeah, first night. I, exactly was so, was I, I, think yeah. I was so excited about seeing him again. And, you know, it had been three months. We had not seen each other for three months. Well, we did in the middle of it, but not in, you know, it wasn't good times when we had to meet in the middle but um that's another story uh when we did get on the boat I was just like wow I'm living on a boat I've seen my husband <laughs> first time three months <laughs> I'm in Greece this is amazing and, and didn't I was it. like I, I hope to shore. we got a, I got <laughs> just got a new anchor actually in the Ionian yeah. in um mm. for a uh, Preveza that was mm. it. and it's a rock now which I know uh you know fame to good be for pretty reliable but mm. that was our first test. <laughs> yeah, that was the <laughs> test there. On the first day we got there. Are we, yeah, 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 are yeah, we yeah. going to wake up down in Blimmin somewhere mm-hmm. else? Or, I don't know. Yeah. No, mm. it, it, it's in sand. That yeah, yeah. That yeah, was, that was interesting. Good. I think if you've got, you got a decent amount of chain out and a reasonably weighted right. anchor, you're okay up to like mm. 40 knots. You know, you, yeah. like nothing crazy. As long as you're not wrapped around a rock or something crazy. Yeah. Um, or if you get, over here we have quite a lot of mud and weed. Yeah, yeah. Rock, it's not so good a match. Really. Ross has got very, very good though at basically like positioning us whenever we anchor. He'll have For comfort. a stern anchor out over there. He'll have yeah. a, a, a bow out, um, line it down. What He'll we're have, doing. you know, obviously if it's busy, you can't do that in the mm-hmm. um in in the anchorages so much. But because of last year being so quiet, yeah, because yeah. of COVID and not many people sailing, we had sometimes the whole bay. <laughs> he would just have a line here and a line there and an anchor there and, <laughs> and we'd be like you know in in raves that are doing this but yeah, yeah we had we were very very it. lucky really yeah, like, yeah, yeah we, we it. it's worth doing if you mm. i quite like, like into the wind and stuff yeah oh. well, we quite because um normally it is north winds if you're on a south bay or there's some rocks somewhere we quite like backing up to the rocks tying yeah. a couple mm. of lines to the rocks Reverse bay the wind kind of just <laughs> goes over you you know yeah. so um yeah and you and feel that, like you have your own private pool as well, don't you? That's right, yeah. You know, and so. it never gets too hot. 
the one thing I really love actually about um, Greece, specifically being on the ocean, is with the northern winds, you it takes 10, 10 degrees, degrees off, off yeah. what's happening on land. And you just yeah, feel like nice. you can breathe. We still have duvets sometimes in the middle of the summer. Which yeah, is... so where like in roads where it's a bit calmer, it might be like 38 degrees. It feels like 28. Yeah, like it still something. gets hot, really hot. But, Does it actually um, get that just... hot up there? Like 38 what? degrees, does it get that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Down, yeah. down in Rhodes. Right, yeah. right, okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've been so on holiday. I've, I've never sailed around there, but I've been on holiday there loads. Just like you know, when I was younger, you guys yeah. say, you know, like you do like which so island? I don't want to get into it. Um, but, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 quite, quite, <laughs> quite a few. Every shitty oh, place where British people go. Like, Ballaraki. Yeah, 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 Good times, good times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like them. No, was it? No, yeah, I used to like going to going places. I don't know if they still have going places, but like the going travel places. agents. Oh yeah, yeah and you go agents. in and you have a places. cheap uh, holiday. You could just yeah, like, yeah, that one. The window to it. You still see yeah. them now. Like you walk through an old, fa- like in Spain, there's loads. So you walk through an old fashioned oh, yeah. town and you see like a shop with holidays advertised. You're like, God, that's nostalgic. People yeah. used to do this. Yeah. And you're like, oh, these people. Yeah, are right. Like, trying to do yeah, this. Like, <laughs> do people uh, still go, yeah. well, obviously not now they can't, but do people, if it wasn't for what's happening, go into a travel agent still. Travel agents? That's not the word, is it? Travel agents. I was trying to say travel estate estate agents. (laughs) Travel off. Love it. Sounds like a great (laughs) guy. Why do people still go into travel office? (laughs) I think (laughs) still do it. Yeah, 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 probably. Some Obviously. people just like to talk to somebody, even though they're doing the same thing as what you would do on your phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's like, that element of, it's part of the holiday almost, isn't it? That bit where well, you book it, nice. you know? Do you know what I really like? Do you know like when you order something online and mm. you're just dealing with a computer and there's no yeah. personal connection there or anything, but then there's exactly. an issue or there's mm. something that you need to discuss. I like getting on the phone and, you know, I had a good old discussion <laughs> with somebody, you know, let's, let's talk about this piece of chain or something. And then yeah. you know, my wife asked me, oh, yeah, I just had a great conversation with a customer service person. And it's like, yeah. that feels nice because you don't really go into a shop that often anymore and like no, engage. No. With some, or it's, especially well, like for the last year, it's know. become even more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the social contact is like so important for happiness, isn't it? I mean, oh, everyone's so important, becoming it? so sort of like, section not section the kind of the word alienated from each other yeah, yeah. that we feel like for example your phone call you feel good after a phone call because yeah. it's almost rare that we get to do that you know yeah. i i'm, I'm pretty old school. Don't, don't even like do phone calls anymore like all just message on facebook yeah. you know, just, like me and my wife were having a discussion about it like a few nights ago i can't remember what brought it on and i think i think some people came around because we like doing airbnb so i think some people came around and they were really nice and be like oh wouldn't it be great if you had like really cool neighbors or something not saying yeah i'm no my neighbors will never listen to this anyway um but yeah, not saying <laughs> we don't have like nice neighbors um, but like that that sense of it just feels like when i was younger you knew everybody on the street and yeah, you would go and knock on the door of your neighbours and just like have a random chat, and that's like yeah. kind of gone. And I think the internet. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's people or if it's the internet, but like the phones, some the apps, it's definitely had a negative impact. Take that. takes away from that. Mm. Yeah. But, that's what we like about right here, isn't it? Yeah, like being it is a bit more back time. It's like what you're yeah. talking about. It's so lovely. I think you know. Firstly, we left the life that we were in mm. for those kinds of not that reason exactly, but we wanted more connection you know as a family we want yeah we wanted that family connection um we definitely get when we can have it we have more quality time with family now like whether it's facetime or if we were going abroad to visit them everything is now quality time whereas before it was like passing and phoning or texting you know we've Mm -hmm. got kind of like almost like minimalized that to us as a family we're always together so we have that connection when when times are tough we've always got each other for a hug or you know someone to talk to but also on a on a different note um where we are now in the marina it, everybody has that sort of similar mindset of they for just sure. they love even though we're not allowed to specifically go on people's boats because of obviously lockdown you can still talk to each other from a distance you know and you can still I don't know. There is a connection there, and so when is that the rule lot... there now? you're not allowed to go on. Well, what is we... it? What's going on there? 
it's very difficult because we, this is kind a... of our garden and, and uh, it's like we've all got our homes in the same garden and we've got a beach attached to it <laughs> and we've got a beach bar which we call the sunset bar which is basically the rocks that look at the sunset <laughs> and uh yeah we yeah it's when when it's more relaxed when the lockdown um restrictions are relaxed because they have been and then they get stronger and then they relax again yeah. you're allowed like up to nine people together you can have nine people sat on the sunset bar watching the sun go down together or we do yoga at the dockside and we are allowed to do that but at the moment we're in deep red so it yeah, is red everybody's red. being way more like cautious and respectful well, really yeah as Great. much as as yeah. much as i think laros ever will you know, yeah. um, but you can't stop the kids playing. <laughs> you know, you no. can't. It's fit, like so, when our, our kid goes to nursery and he's he's going through that process. You know, like picking up every cold and every type of bug. So we're getting uh, sick constantly as well. Oh, no, it's fine. They have to do it. He's he's still at that yeah. age where he discovers what everything is by looking it, whether it's on the bottom of your shoe or on a wall. You know, that's his way of figuring what, stuff out. What age is that? Because I'll still do that. <laughs> he's yeah, nine he's and like, a half. He's coming up to two. I did it. So oh. I was like very you know, old stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that it's like it's like your explanation of the situation is like pretty accurate, but the concept yeah. of it is like, this is so strange. Like how I, 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 yeah. I, 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 adults having this conversation now. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we can't see a tenth person but nine can mm. come. Like, yeah, I know it's there? crazy. It well we I don't think well, you ever really get more than nine people in, in a gathering in the marina anyway, because it's probably not yeah. even enough people that would, would be able to do it but um it's like it's like a neighborhood it's so lovely and we do feel very supported and safe everyone it's, i mean we're all like-minded yeah. Yeah. So, everywhere we've been in greece like, yeah. we bump into people we all help each other I'm oh sure, yeah the greeks are incredible sure, same with you over where you are the sailing community that's what we love about it it's yeah just, any most yeah. people there's there's one in a hundred that's an idiot um but most people will help help someone out. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I think once you get a little group as well, you know, people who are all like yeah. similar, yeah. similar yeah. interested. Yeah, like, everyone's got everyone's back as well. Walking over a few bucks, oh, can you come and help? Yeah. They'll just give up three or four hours of the day to like mm. just come and help yeah. you with whatever issue you've got. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah there, exactly. there is one issue. The, the one issue is if you ever want to go to the toilet, it takes you about two hours to go and come yeah. back. We, we are people. very fortunate oh, right. that <laughs> just like we're like, if you, imagine, <laughs> if you imagine the end of a street, the end of a block, we are yeah. positioned at the end of a pontoon on the end of a block yeah, so right. that the kids don't, you know, go on everyone's boats all the time, but also we're like distance enough from like the main path so that we can just work get our heads down and get the homeschool done and all the rest of it um and we we don't bother other people with our noise because we're, like we're, right. we're really rowdy um so we don't bother the neighbors uh but also we sort of get a bit of distance and peace but then like ross said if you try to get to the supermarket or go out of the marina or just go to the toilets yeah. you bump into everyone and and, and you, yeah but but you never walk away from it feeling like oh that wasn't it was it's always a lovely yeah, you know nice. like you say human contact so yeah. we've got we had people living closer to us in the street that we lived at in the uk all along the street and yeah, yeah, we, yeah we some of them we'd never spoken to before in our lives so yeah, yeah we're so lucky i mean you think about people who are in high-rise buildings and flats and um i don't know those sort of situations where they don't come into contact with people very much mm. We oh, are do that. so lucky. Yeah, like yeah, we yeah. always think every day we're like, wow. Yeah, we count our lucky stars that we're here really. Yeah. But, um, in the winter time the the boat can feel at times sort of not possibly baby, possibly we get cabin fever. Like a pressure cooker. <laughs> <laughs> so um it can feel a little bit like particularly when, a little bit. when there's bad weather. <laughs> yeah, the bad weather gets me. It stirs me up, like the, the sound of the howling through the um the masts, mm. that, that constant sort of drone. You don't notice it, but it does it does slowly sort of like I mean you probably know what I mean. It's it's like a little leak in your bucket of energy. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> slowly like going of, down. It's like you're in a really nice prison sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. 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 quality yeah. prison and i'm just quite nice yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, <laughs> which no one's telling you you can't get off but you actually can't <laughs> yeah but you've, yeah, you've got it's... like a full enclosure on on over your uh, cockpit yeah yeah which is nice for the winters 
it, and it would have been nice the first winter if Ross had known it was even on the boat. <laughs> oh, no way. It's got, you know, yeah. There's supposed to be a spinnaker, so there was supposed to be a spinnaker with the boat. Funny looking like spinnaker. There's this bag in the back of the boat, and in Plymouth, I never needed a spinnaker, so I never mm. went to get it. Yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until we got here that um, <clears> I even realised we had didn't have a spinnaker, we had this full enclosure, which would have been brilliant in Plymouth. This enclosure because mm. the winter's like it was that. lashing it down <laughs> sideways. Yeah, yeah. We'd have left it up, you know, we would have, you know. Didn't you sail over here with it down as well? You didn't know you had it until you got to Portugal, was it? I can't remember. It was when I looked at the spinnaker. Yeah. Um, it was a whenever while. you needed that. Yeah. <laughs> so it was when you went to get out the spinnaker, you then found to your enclosure for your coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't need that now. I need you sail. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good though yeah. because it allows you to have like a. I suppose it's something similar to that, what you'd have as a conservatory in the UK. You know, it's another like, room. I mean, we're in it yeah, now. You've got like a oh, bit yeah, more definitely. light. Yeah. This is our office. In, it is in just the winter, like a it, it gets pretty hot though, doesn't it, in the sun. Well, we have yeah, to let just, sides down and stuff. But, yeah. you know, you've got, well, for example, our bow cabin, which is our bedroom, mm. is the bedroom from TV movie room. <laughs> so that right. doubles as that. Dual At a certain time of day, <laughs> the boys would be in there watching a the movie or or I won't be sleep or relax. And then the boys are at the back. The back? Yeah. I always get that wrong. Stern. Um it looks so my knowledge. So we've got two stern double cabins. They yeah. yeah. So, so they're they, they've got a lot of room. Quite far away place. from us, um, which kind of like provides enough distance that we don't feel like we're on top of each other all the time. But then we've got the middle section. Where the we... saloon as our home school, really, isn't it? Yeah, and it's our like sound barrier. Eat, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically, it's like our eating homeschooling area. And then this up here is our office, or if that's when it gets tricky, My isn't office. it? Where, where he likes to think so. When um when <laughs> the enclosure, like when it's really bad weather or cold, and we can't be up at it, we're down there and we're trying to do homeschooling and working. Or he's editing. He's got his. He's all right for him. He's got his headphones on. Noise <laughs> I just look at him like this. How nice! I'm working. <laughs> yeah, he's like, but I'm working. I'm editing. Oh, it's all right for you, isn't it? Anyway, but um, we do have. Editing takes like hours, and hours. <laughs> it really does seem to, even you when so you finish, just so something. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> But um, I think every room has a has like a double purpose, and we've we've just found our way of making it work, haven't we? Making it. Flow. And it, it's different in winter to summer. Like, yeah. Um, when, oh, winter's definitely harder. And it's funny because we have a winter and summer, but it's because our first winter, this whole Corona thing, kind of kicked off. Yeah. And it you can't go anywhere anyway, so mm. it's kind of like we are marina based more in the winter, and mm. then when we're at anchor, everything changes again doesn't it yeah we have to sort of switch um switch lifestyles don't we in the winter we we're in work 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 and it's easy just step off the boat yeah. all the shops you can just get anything whenever you want it but you don't get that feeling obviously that you get when you're an anchor which is somewhere else and that's oh, why yeah. i think degrees, we, we work degree, yeah. so hard in the winter it's so that in the summer like we're sort of like but they call it blast and blast and cruise. So you blast in the winter, you work really, really hard. Uh, the boat makes do whatever you can. Really and then when the summer comes, everything drops down. The homeschooling drops down to like a minimal level and we can just really just like immerse ourselves in it. But you don't get the rough without the smooth, you know? So we yeah. have to have to push hard in the winter. But we we're hoping we might do something different this winter. But that's that's an that's a in the pipeline well, we've kind of found our flow in the year so like laura's yeah. saying we we film all of our footage in the summer mm -hmm. we get enough for like a whole year so mm -hmm. we do more like vlogging in the summer showing everyone the fun stuff winter we no really... one wants to see the in, just the inside of a boat in the winter <laughs> in the winter we really mm -hmm. do we concentrate on homeschooling a lot we mm -hmm. call it boat school but we plow as much information into the boys as and that sounds like we work into the phone. We don't. Yeah. Mate. We, we make it fun. Like a Chinese sweatshop going up and down there. Yeah. Up, <laughs> down at the table. No, it's not. It's not like it's. To be fair, I think with homeschooling, you can get like in in a school situation for a two hour class, a child would probably learn a not even a quarter of what you can learn in two hours when it's you teaching them 
one, and you're almost one, one to one. To one. one to you're, oh, it's you like, know. Yeah, it's like personal tutoring. You, you know, you could go for. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, you could go for in a year. What you what you take four years usually. Yeah. Exactly, so, and so we have to be really mindful of that actually because I put a lot of pressure on myself when it comes to schooling to, you know, think, oh, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? And I only recently really sort of properly let myself have the permission to slow down a bit with them because we've got a friend in the week, yeah we've got a, made a friend she's who, a private teacher she's actually okay. from the youtube channel to get lost yeah. emily and adam and emily was a oh, primary school to teacher. Her a couple of times actually have you uh, yeah, oh that's so lovely she's, uh, i think she's, she's friends with yeah she's friends with some of my friends who have a sailing oh, okay. channel so yeah we just oh, had a random she's conversation they got friends with yeah well uh, well she's actually got the boys at the moment doing a beach oh, school nice. lesson yeah so she we've talked a lot because obviously having someone who was uh in a, a professional in in schools having someone to actually talk to about it was amazing because i've basically yeah, been right. yeah i've That's been doing sure. whatever i could do for two years now basically like just clasping at straws to make sure I'm doing everything properly and she stopped me and said Laura I give you permission to slow down you're doing absolutely fine they are you know doing amazingly well that's really really stop true. stop bashing yourself because <laughs> you do it's mum guilt isn't it yeah you know, it's, it's, it's every mum gets it like the kids education you haven't got that um you haven't got that reassurance that you know like when you when they exactly, go to school exactly. and they do a test and they do really well yeah. like yeah you know or parents you think yeah but yeah, I suppose yeah. it's a lot more difficult to like manage oh yeah you, you don't... we would we did i tested josh quite a lot with um his sats because they yeah. do their sats yeah. at, um what year they do seven it. years old i think it is I'm yeah not really sure he, oh the first one was yeah the primary school one yeah, yeah. he didn't yeah. do that so we, we had like mock ones through twinkle which is what this was like the program the teachers used yeah and um he, that, he was he? he was doing really well with those so for me that was reassuring and then we have this amazing app uh for anyone who's listening actually that homeschools yeah. this would be uh gold uh called doodle maths so okay. Doodle Maths, they do Doodle Maths, Doodle English, Doodle Tables and Doodle Spell, wow. but the actual app is called Doodle Maths. And okay. what they do, is, it's like, it's this incredible app that basically teaches them English and maths um, online, but in such a way that the child absolutely loves it, really enjoys it, but they it's geared in such a way that it gets the... The right level of curriculum into them and you have mm. uh targets and stuff but you get as a parent you get feedback on like their age the current age that they're where they're at, at in the curriculum where they're at in the curriculum where their okay. gaps are what you can it's it's fantastic Brilliant. and a, another one actually while i'm thinking of it is one called tapity which is science okay. <laughs> and they have online teachers they do live science online so classes. classes oh brilliant yeah. absolutely i think with everything that's happened in the world uh, we, again, have been quite lucky in the sense that there's so much more online now. Like, mm. so much of the world has had to go to online schooling. Yeah. The, the resources that are available now, anyone could do it. Anyone could do it anywhere. All you need is a lot of patience. see, like, yeah. almost the world changing. Yeah, going that way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, schools what say. started in Victorian times. And I can I know. see, what, what are we going to be doing in 100 years? Are we still going to school? <laughs> well you know i remember like when i was uh, i think i was like yeah i was 10 because we actually went from the 10th birthday my parents took me to uh disneyland is it disneyland or mm. disney world? no disney world in america disney. the one in florida yeah and they've got this place called the epcot center which is like a science and technology theme park it sounds boring yeah. but it's actually really cool no that sounds really cool to me. Got, so one of the attractions is this it's like there's a ginormous golf ball when you walk in a ginormous right. being like you know 50 foot 60 foot whatever it is and there's a ride inside and it's showing you the future. It actually shows you the past, the present, and the future, but it's showing you what could happen. Right. And this was like 20, like 25 years ago. Yeah, because I'm like yeah. 35, it was 25 years ago. And it showed you kids sat at home with hologram teachers. And that's the No story. way. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's pretty much like, happening. Yeah, it's pretty much happening. But like what, <laughs> what I think is going to be a pretty interesting discussion is well, two, working from home. Like, do people really need to go into an office? So, uh, a lot of people are discovering they don't. Oh, yeah. Well, I think we're finding out that mm. they don't. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever yeah. heard of the book, The Four Hour Work Week? 
Yeah, but I've never read it. Yeah, a few people. Well, I've read se sections of it, and one of the sections is where you can actually, if you are in a job and you want to work from home, mm -hmm. you can like make steps towards doing it and sort of show your boss that you can do it from home, and then you can do it from home. But who's to say your home doesn't have to be? <laughs> somewhere else in china yeah. or australia or whatever but you just mm. don't tell your boss <laughs> it's brilliant it's fine <laughs> yeah like yeah no so i wonder yeah. if there are any people out there nowadays like through this sort of furlough time who are having to prove their exact location we've, model got, a friend. <laughs> we've got a friend who's mm. going to run a restaurant from his boat yeah yeah so in another country yeah, just... restaurant in another country from his boat yeah so. i was speaking you... to a guy yeah. like a few weeks ago who like runs his casino from his boat. I have mm. no clue how he does that, but yeah, he's a casino nah. owner. And he was like, yeah, I do all my business <gasps> from my boat. It sounds to me like you know? he's probably got a lot of people working for him. There's a lot of cameras well, in there. Yeah. Yeah. He's got Basically, a pretty, good, probably like got a pretty good life as well. Yeah. Mm. Well, like the, so the, the concept, because like in my, in my job, I deal a lot with like the HR departments of, of big businesses, like oil and gas companies, and um, they're all working from home. Like all of them, they're all working from home. So that is one yeah. job which you can completely say you don't need to be there. Uh, accounting, yeah. IT. Like I've got a friend who is a, it's like a senior manager with the European Commission, and he runs yeah. like he runs a department at the European Commission. Now you'd think, wow, that's really serious, and it's like we've got all these servers and hardware and stuff, and he he doesn't go to work anymore. He can do everything yeah. from home, just like Remotely. some, some yeah. support in Brussels, and that's it. So it's like there's definitely going to have to be a conversation there because it yeah. depends on how much work actually weighs you down as a person. Oh, it definitely. depends on your job. But I, my, I, I was not a corporate life for years and years, and it does make you miserable. Mm. And you don't realise it makes you miserable until you walk away from it. Oh, exactly. Sure. And I think yeah. uh, like there's the whole environment dictates performance as well. And yeah. if for an employer, it kind of makes sense that if you're happy in your environment, mm. as long as you are self-disciplined, Things that you can organ like we've had to become very very self-disciplined and routined to get the job done if you're happier in your environment you're probably going to be better at your job anyway so it makes sense and I think it's a beautiful thing that the world is becoming more open-minded yeah. to what you do and don't need mm. so I mean mm. like for me I, you know I'm, I'm an online coach and um and I coach from the boat but also I train from the boat and I if people want to train I can take them anywhere and people can't understand sort of to a point the concept of not needing a gym but yeah. actually you don't need, one. You don't need it no, no, you, you don't no. need one you can you know you can there's so many ways of um Sorry, I could go on a rant about fitness. Can I? I've got to be really careful because once I get on topic, yeah. you don't get me you off. Stop it. Let's just I'm, say I'm there, 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 there are no limits. Let's just say that. But yeah, yeah. I competed that oh, actually. One, one last thing. I did compete last year without the use of gym. I trained for an international IFBB competition. I did. So, um, oh. yeah, well, I used to obviously. Um, I don't know if anyone knows the backstory, but I was competing for the UK for quite a while. Uh, Team GB uh, got to 10th, 10th in the world, which um, was quite nice. But um, going on from that, when we started sailing, I still had it in me. I was like, oh, I love bodybuilding. Like, I love the, the process of prep. I love the actual competing side of it. So when coronavirus hit last year, and we went to Not lockdown. I had a comp booked in the UK, actually. I had flights, mm. accommodation, everything was booked. I was going to fly back for my 40th present to myself was going to be to compete for one last time. And I was going to do the British National Championships, which I'd won a couple of years before. And I was hoping to go back and, you know, reclaim the title or whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> I had, I was just, the idea, I, had, I love having a challenge. I love something to sort of aim for, especially with, with fitness, because um, it keeps you on track, doesn't it? So... Anyway, that didn't happen and I was gutted. And then the IFBB announced that they were going to do their first ever online e mm. So I decided, right, I'm training here anyway. I've got this beautiful environment. Let's just do it here. And uh, yeah, literally right I literally there. did it right outside the boat. We had to do a, a film my presentation and stunning scenery, I a lovely bikini. Yeah, they, what, they, I don't... 
So it was live, but you were live shooting from your location. No, no. No, you put it in a video. I don't know. It it's wasn't... a video entry. So normally right. with competitions, with bodybuilding competitions, you have a stage yeah. and you have to do a uh, certain like uh, walks and then you get called back and all the rest of it. They do comparisons. So there wasn't all of that, but you had to do an official video, which you would then send in as an entry on a specific day to just prove that you'd prepped for the comp. Mm. And then they would assess you via the videos. It was um, judged by the public, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, it wasn't. Oh, it didn't right. work out so great because it was judged by the public. And I'm a bit uh, sometimes. And oh, I said, yeah. everyone, you need to vote a five for me if you want me to win. And um, it you was need to five. Vote a one. It was supposed to be one. So you're supposed oh, to be no. one. Everyone, <laughs> like, like all these people. Your old friends voted like, you down. No, Laura. And all the yeah, strangers probably voted for you. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I still got third place, though, to be fair, even though I had to switch it around after a bit. But anyway, um, With your entire family saying, rooting like, against you, you still got <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> lose, like, Laura, lose. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 And then Although, no one knew. And then I had to tell everyone, which was even worse. Yeah. That's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the point I'm getting to is, like it just shows you know that you don't need what you think you need to yeah. do what you want to do there's always a way always a way and I think if you're open-minded about anything you can yeah we found a way aren't we to yeah. make it work yep. people say we're mental but <laughs> sometimes yeah, I think cool. we are <laughs> I mean, even yeah. if you think though like the, the idea like 20 years ago that you could run like a fitness business from a boat Mm. because mm. that was i mean like f the fitness industry has gone through like a few like leaps over like the last 50 years you had like the 70s yeah. 80s where uh, the arnie was coming around and louis ferrigan oh, and oh yeah Good old in, in the 90s you had like mr motivator and people wearing like oh yeah <laughs> remember that guy yeah, he, no, he, he, he was awesome he does oh, videos on youtube love he mr. Still videos on YouTube. Lycra, yeah. is it like yeah yeah, yeah. he had he he, Just about remember he was like yeah, yeah. Really oh, cool. Really good. Really cool. Yeah, it was yeah, just, brilliant. I, he was like the Joe like Joe Wicks, <laughs> kind of like the Joe Wicks of back like then. The original Joe Wicks. Yeah, yeah. now Joe Wicks uh, doesn't wear lycra. Yeah. It's a shame he should, but I think a lot of women would like it if Joe Hicks I'd like him to wear like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he should. We should have like a comp, like no, not a comp, a poll. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go off topic again. <laughs> Sorry. Don't need to talk about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why are we talking about Jamie again? Anyway, but um, yeah. But I think the the point that, that I'm trying to get to with the with what we do is because it uh, the, we call it boat fit, and um, it's basically to say to people you can learn everything you want to learn about how to look after yourself mentally or physically. You can train anywhere with very little equipment and you can, you know, you don't have to commute. You a don't lot have of to diet use and nutrition. Other, yeah, a, a lot of what a lot of what you want to get is not actually what you think you need to do. Like people think they need to throttle themselves in a gym to get their results when actually that's ten to fifteen percent of what they need to do. Yeah. And most most of people's problems are not what they think is their problem. It's the lifestyle behind it. And so yeah. What we're trying to do is kind of like share how how we how we eat, how we move, how we you know look after ourselves, especially for me um, specifically, and uh, sort of like inspire with that. You know, there's probably sailors out there who would love to keep fit, who are like looking at their boat, thinking, "Well, how am I going to do it here?" So, yeah, the TRX you. is is brilliant I, oh I remember, brilliant so i was um i'd gone through phases of like exercising loads and being like insanely heavy and like deadlifting mm. ridiculous things and then just not doing oh, anything brilliant. for like a year powerlifting so, like, yeah yeah so so like for the past year i've probably done like i don't know two two workouts a week very light um yeah. i did my uh, i popped like three discs about four years oh, ago oh no yeah, oh, it was insane! Okay. Like I was, like I was deadlifting like four hundred kilos. <gasps> insane! Oh, I've no, heard of people that's, doing that before. Oh, it didn't happen it. then. No. Oh, I was, I was at home. I was bored one night, so I was like, right, I'll do like a sit-up workout. I literally did <laughs> one crunch. Oh no! Went. 
I was like, what on earth is this? Yeah, it was literally Must just have like a week one thing, and then I just, yeah, yeah, and I just and went then it was gone. So, um, yeah, we ended yeah. up going to a doctor, and he, oh, who was he? he was, I think he was like the physio, no, he wasn't the physiotherapist. He was the something, he was like a sports surgeon for the mm. UK cricket team. So like this guy from Pakistan, mm. and they flew him over to do like the UK cricket stuff. He was really good. He was like one of the yeah. best in the world. Good guy then. Oh, it was so amazing. Like, I walked in there, and I sat down. He was just like, right, I'll tell you what's wrong with you. You're like, Okay, and like it looked, you could see it immediately. Just, yeah, yeah, it was just like the bottom three or the bottom four are like this. He was like, "How do you know that?" And he was like, "I can tell with the way you walk and the way you sit and how you sat now." No like, way. Well, uh, yeah, so my wife ended up going back to him. It's like, like a years later. some kind of magic power. Yeah, we, he can just he can look at someone the way they stand, and he'd be like, "Right, I know how your spine will look, and I know it's doing this yeah. or it's doing that or it's out like it's, it's insane." Um, but yeah, ever since then, I've been like so so careful with what I do mm. Um, mm. but one thing I, I went through like a period of doing like insanely heavy stuff so I was like right I'm going to do body weight for like a year and then I got a TRX and like yeah but TRX you do not need a weight you no. don't need no. a gym like they're Nothing. so incredible we've um we haven't got, actually I've got two TRXs and I haven't got them out yet just because for some reason I haven't found the time this is easy but yeah, you, we, I'm thinking the we could do it on the main well, that's got, exactly what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, actually, a Davit frame, which d- lifts the tender up. Oh, and down. that's brilliant. It's I all got it. pulleys mm. that, that, so the tender can go up and yeah. down. So we can yeah. put weights, buckets. In fact, I did that. Yeah, yeah I used to have a bucket water, and do lap like pull downs. Up. It's brilliant. That's really good. We do, yeah, we do, yeah. we do pull ups on on the frame mainly, don't we? But um, we've yeah. got weights on board, which uh, I was like a a non-negotiable they are coming yeah. i don't care if you don't bring any of my other stuff ross but the weights get here mm. um and uh there was some discussions wasn't there because it's quite a lot yeah yeah <laughs> you imagine the space you want, the you've got like, a like full 200, barbell 200 kilos stuff. of weight yeah. <laughs> I think it was, um, <laughs> like right your, your limit is was it 40 or 50 How yeah right? but it balances out the boat because if you've got water, the water tanks on one side you see my weights have actually can act as a counterweight so oh, you know there was a reason <laughs> they have a purpose <laughs> the Counteract they I have a purpose. You said at the start of the conversation you don't know much Double about purpose. boat stuff, and now you're trying to explain <laughs> like the physics of how your particular boat works. Yeah, like, yeah like I do that about <laughs> yeah. a lot of things. When we tack, we say, "I say, all right, move all your weights." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we'll just naturally tack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got a purpose. I have dropped them though. I've dropped because I put them up through the um, the hatch at the front, mm. and then after I've trained on deck, which is the, the beauty about the Varia Forty Two, by the way, is just the fact there's like a clear deck so you can do yoga or anything about it, yeah. I absolutely love it um and I just dropped them through the hatch <laughs> and yeah. I've, I've dropped them through the hatch onto a three litre water bottle before and cracked the bottle open all over oh, our yeah, bed so I've dropped a 10 a, a 5 kg and it's bounced off the bed and bounced onto the floor and that and then to the floor <laughs> oh I don't think I told you about that one <laughs> no I know the dentist yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> you notice the dentist <laughs> yeah the kids don't destroy the boat. I do. <laughs> yeah, I think we all do a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely well lived in for sure. Yeah. I, I so, think the yeah. boat. So we're um, we've been like looking at boats, the, the next boat to get, and we like kind of decided on for a number of different reasons. Anyway, we've decided on like the new Bavaria Fifty One because that's like a combination of. Oh, a of we've been things. looking at that, haven't we? Oh, yeah, we it's so boats. nice. But my favourite is the. The, the same design as yours, but the the Bavaria 46, because it's exactly oh. the same layout, but it's got the yeah. um, the bunk cabin, like just, yeah, in okay. front, yeah. just in front of where your master cabin is. Um, I mm. think, honestly, I think it's like the perfect layout for a family. It yeah. is. Do you know what? Perfect. The, the advice I was given before we bought Holly Blue, mm. and bear in mind, I'd never had a boat before, not mm. any boat. The, the, the only sailing I'd done was on lasers. So um, Holly Blue seemed big to yeah. me but mm. i do remember standing on her thinking that i couldn't go any smaller than a 42 no mm. no this is with no not. experience but the advice i was given was to go for a 38 and i thought i was you know going on the larger side but i kind of um if i knew what i knew now i probably started 46 mm, uh, i think yeah. the 46 they say 46 of yours is amazing I yeah, they perfect. say you can't handle that on your own, but I reckon. Yeah. I oh, you, I you, be, you've, um, yeah. uh, you know, you've uh, sailed bigger boats for friends and stuff before. Well, not... We've got a friend with a 50. That's that's a nice size. Oh, well. yeah. Really um, nice. And actually, we, we've we seen a very similar 50 to Holly Blue. That's the owner's mm. version. Mm. And it has two stern cabins. 
it has I think one bunk rather than two yeah and one of the bunks is like an extra large Viva kind of owner's yeah, cabin it's and beautiful for us yeah. if we just had that bunk kind of area where the kids could sleep if we have guests or we could throw all our stuff yeah because our bathroom doubles up as a jug room you can yeah, use the toilet that, but you can't the use the shower you're talking about so the 50 foot version of yours which is the owner's yeah. yeah. cabin that is so yeah. rare like is it really hardly, yeah, they hardly because so that that particular hull shape it's uh it's mostly yeah, used for charter boats yeah. so like if you if you go online and you find like 20 of them available I can guarantee you that even none or one will be the owner's version. And whereas you can yeah, get the yeah. normal cabin one for like 110 grams, the owner's version will be like 170 grams. And it's probably in Germany. But it's gorgeous. There's just hardly any of them. Mm. It's, it's yeah, just, I've, I've been looking around the world and you can see the odd one, but that's the layout I like. Yeah. I don't think yeah. we're going to ever go we, down the road of charging. We don't feel like, like we never, we still, even at this point, don't feel like, Holly Blue is too small. We, no. we when we go down inside, we're, I'm all. I still to this day, two years, three years later, go down inside and go. It's a big boat, even though yeah. it's 42 foot. It feels big, but We've um, been on a lot really, of boats. Really now, well. Yeah, we. I think you've got to. It's it's that whole thing though. Of you've got to be in love with your boat, haven't you? Yeah. Anyway, to have a boat, it's, it's got to be funny, the like, love of your life almost. It is anyway. There's, there's so many opinions out there. And I, I was looking at the Odysseys, the Benetos, the, the Barriers, because that's all I could afford, you know. And I wanted as new a boat as I could for my money. And I kind of thought, well, this is what the charter companies do. It's it's quite economical money-wise. Mm. Mm. And, you know, it's about doing the dream, isn't it, you know. Mm. And um, mm. I thought we're only starting out as a family. I'm not going to be crossing oceans straight away and... I could, we kind of were attracted to the island life, you know, hopping yeah. around islands and living the Mediterranean kind of lifestyle. That was the plan for the first two years. So we mm, had like a yeah. two year plan. Mm. And I was looking at them all, but I don't know why. I just, I've always liked the VWs, which is kind of German made. And I, mm. I really liked the look of the Bavaria. Yeah. Um, so he bought one without telling me. But, <laughs> yeah. So I bought it without <laughs> telling Laura. Yeah. Mm. But um, I only looked at the one boat. I only looked at this boat. Yeah. I didn't look at anything else, which I'm not sure I'd recommend, but it just you felt just know. right. When you know, you know, you know don't you? But I think since you've then, you've been on lots of boats. Like, and if you've done yeah. enough research before and you know what, because when you're with a family, it's like the sailability that comes second, it's got to function as yeah. a home first. Because yeah, yours, well, a bit, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home than actually, especially if you're island hopping, you don't sail that much. But I mean, yeah. what do you say, like an hour a week, maybe, if, you, if you're hopping between anchors? Oh, no. Not much. Oh, no. I would say it's three. Best. Yeah, you can, you can Every do. Every week, we, we, we've, we've gone lots of legs and done quite a distance yeah. you know, over a week. Mm. And then other times we've, we've stayed in the same spot for week. two weeks. Um, yeah. So yeah. It's that whole. We'll just do what we feel like. You go, so, yeah, we kind of don't really have a sale plan. We kind of make it up as we go along. <laughs> we I've go, got a sale plan. I like it here. Should I've had we way stay too here? long. Yeah. I've way too long to you have he's yeah. got a sale plan but he had a sale plan last year and it still didn't go to plan we yeah. still ended up somewhere totally different <laughs> to where we thought we were going to be and it's all yeah. dictated by the winds how much we like where we are you know what's available where we are you know if we need to get water so much can change mm. it but that's the beauty of it isn't well, it i think with the way the world is we're probably going to stay in greece i think that's a given for the meantime so um, our plan is well sort of my plan but it's our plan <laughs> is we hopefully, if we're allowed, can sail over to the Ionian before the Meltimi kicks in. Mm. And we're just going to give the Meltimi months, July and August, a break this year. Mm. Do the Ionian. I sailed through there for a week. Loved it. Yeah. The only thing with the Ionian is it's very busy, but I don't think it'll be that busy this year. No. Yeah, and I think it'll be stunning. Yeah. You know, well, uh, actually, the, a lot, I've been talking to a lot of charter companies over the last couple of weeks. That I'll tell you why later. Um, but yeah. they're all they're all booked for. Are they? Oh wow! Well. And the majority July. are also getting booked okay. up for September. Cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's people getting, just yeah, is, they want to escape, don't they? Yeah. It's a bit risky at this stage. Like I wouldn't be spending like five grand on a charter. Like in. No, I wouldn't be booking anything until it was clear what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Just sort of sit tight and wait and see what, what comes out in the wash. You know, we can't even book to see family. Because... Yeah, we're not even booking flights to go home. No, no. At the moment, we're not sure if anyone from the UK is even going to be allowed to visit outside the UK this year. So it's all a bit, 
you know, up in the air. we don't even know if we're going to be sailing. <laughs> they you, say they say mid May, but you make a plan and then you have yeah, to roll with you just see what happens. happens. Yeah, if we, you know, I, they say mid May, don't they? So we've got it in our heads. Like we're going on the hard next week to do maintenance. Okay. And um, in stuff. theory, we yeah. could be sailing within six weeks. Reckon? Yeah. <sighs> I'm hoping. That'd be nice. That'd hoping. Be so nice. But um, so nice. yeah. What needs um, doing on the hard? Just some. Has it been a while since you did the anti foul? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't done. I haven't done the anti foul since we left Plymouth, which is now yeah. coming up. It's over well, about two years, two years yeah. or so. So it, mm. she's due it's to be done. Time. But over yeah. here, the the water's so clear. She doesn't weed up hardly at all. Yeah. And because I spearfish a lot, I'm quite good underwater. I clean the hull myself. You do, don't you? Do it yeah. while we're kind of like on I've, the go. I've left it now because it's the marina and. Um, I know she's coming out, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're gonna jet wash off. There is that, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah mainly anti fouling. I, I should look at the seal fittings as well, but I'm not sure I'm gonna do that or not. Yeah, I'm gonna have a look at them. Yeah, I've got a question. So, you like do spear fishing, and like, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily know free diving, but you do spear fishing. How long can yeah. you hold your breath for at five meters of depth? It varies. I, I got to a point where I mean I could hold I could hold my breath in bed. <laughs> yeah, that's easy though. And in, <laughs> and in, and in but, um, so generally around three three minutes three minutes twenty something like that under the water. Um, no, on my bed. On my bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be pretty impressive. By, <laughs> but uh, underwater, I don't I don't have a watch which tells me how deep I am. No. I was looking at. Um, I did a GoPro kind of video shot of me going under and mm. trying to get a fish actually. Kind of. And I, I was completely zoned out on this fish and I was I lost a track of time. But when I looked at the video clip from I could see when I'd gone down to go up mm. to Ferrer, yeah. it was um about a minute and a half, two mm. minutes. Yeah, that's so, really uh, good. But you're distracted because which... you've got a task. If you've got a task, yeah, you're not yeah. thinking oh, about yeah. the carbon exactly. dioxide that which you is, need to breathe out. Is, yeah, which is I concerning because you need to get back up quite quickly. I always <laughs> go on my own and I like to leave. And I think it's a good advice if you, you well, the good advice if you don't, you know, spearfish on your own. But if yeah. you do because you want to get it done, then leave a little bit in the tank just in case. Mm. I, I never. Because I hate to shallow water blackout with no one around. So oh my goodness! Don't talk about that. Yeah, that yeah. freaks yeah. me out. Because I'm the one that's like, I'm yeah, on the boat. I just wake up somewhere else. I'm left on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm left on the boat thinking yeah. he's been gone two hours. I hope he's all right. And it, it is. It is. Uh, the trouble is, as well, when you worry about that, you, your breath hold is ridiculous. Yeah, because you, you have know, to be short, your heart rate massive. goes up, doesn't it? So, so you, you have to like more. you have to throw all of that out your mind. Mm. Apparently. There's a guy here that is really good at spear fishing. He, his dad did it for 40 years, passed on all his experience, and he's been doing it for 20. Mm. And he knows all the good spots. And he says fish can feel what you're thinking. They have mm. like a lateral line running down their body, and mm. they know if you're tense, if you're excited, if you're whatever. He yeah. says you've just got to be at one with the sea and just you know let completely go. let go mm. and just be part of it and I think that's really good advice for one catching fish and two holding your breath longer yeah <laughs> you never yeah, you never actually knew you're not going to hold your hold your breath for something. you can't do, do you do the um the apps where you like you hold your breath for like 30 seconds and then no, you do... I know of them this is where I was gonna before yeah. before we actually even got a boat or knew we were going to be doing this Ross used to have this thing where when he was having a bath, I would come into the bathroom <laughs> and he would have a watch on the side with a timer on it and he would be under the bath water and I'd be like, what the heck are you doing? And yeah, he, he before we even knew we were going to be living on the sea and he didn't even think he'd know he'd be spearfishing, none of that. What? He was practising. Well, he taught the boys to do it, which it was, is a bit worrying. Was, I I got my this might be a quiet. male thing. <laughs> Right. Oh, do you do it as well? well? Right, I'll tell you what, right, so when I was younger, like in my early 20s, I, I always had, had this thought in the back of my mind, I was like, right, if shit hits the fan and the world really turns to shit, I need to be prepared for And this. the zombies so come. So what I started doing was like, I was like, no, if, if something happens, I need to be able to hold my breath for a long time. So if there's a nuclear apocalypse and all the radiation yeah. comes, I need to be able to yeah, go be there for 100 years. and survive the wave, you know what I mean? Like call the breath yeah. Then I was like, right. If we have like, if some type of bomb goes off and it destroys, you, you know, the roads and stuff, and maybe it destroys all my shoes, I need to get some yeah. hard 
stoles, you know, going on my oh, face. Oh, brilliant. I'm not, I'm not literally prepared. At home. Mm. So, yeah, I'm going to have like, I'm going to be able to hold my breath for ages. And then I was doing like hangs as well. You know, I thought maybe I'll need to climb trees and stuff to protect myself. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it was weird. Fair grills. Like, like, yeah, it was like, exactly like that. But I was like, yeah, there's three yeah. or four things that if the world really turns to shit, I'm going to be okay. But what, do you know, yeah, when, you, yeah. when you said then, yeah, you just walk in sometimes, he's in the bathroom, he's holding his breath. It's like, yeah. yeah it's, it's like sometimes I'm it's on the sofa, thing, like, my me. cheeks are full yeah. of air and my wife walks in and I'm like, she must have had some stress. Boys, boys turn into men. They enough, never stop being boys inside. I used to do it at school. I used to look at the clock and yeah. just hold, while the, the teacher's talking, yeah, I used to look at the clock and try and, back then it was trying to get to two minutes. And I think mm. at school that was my sort of best, maybe two minutes 20. Um, before 16 but I don't know as I got older so, somewhere I just started getting past three minutes and you yeah you've always had um, a really good friend of yours haven't you that you've always they had even to now they'll still discuss what they would do if there was a zombie apocalypse. oh we have a plan if it's a zombie. they've got a plan, a plan. Like, <laughs> oh they've got a life like talking what about great data. like she'll say something yeah. stupid she'll be like oh what if this happened and like you know, COVID turned into zombies. I was like, well, obviously we'd need to convert this to the house. We'd have to put metal railings. We like going to this. <laughs> I know what we'd to just do. be Don't out worry. that entrance. <laughs> we'd that just be the main reason. Yeah. In the middle spear of the gun. ocean, hiding. Mm. That's the main reason for buying spear guns. Yeah. The second was the fish. <laughs> okay. So well, um... it's really serious, and everyone turns into a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do like to be able to provide it, don't you? As well, that's the spear fishing thing. You know, like spear he likes great. to. Yeah, it's, it's such a sense of achievement for like a man to come home with. Well, Laura yeah. likes look, wife, Laura likes food, that, family. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you like your meditation and yoga. Mm. And for me, I think you're naturally doing that. You know, you have to breath, be in a meditative state. You're breathing state. hard. Yeah. You know I mean, you take deep breaths and mm. you're controlling your breathing. I think whenever you control your breathing, like scuba diving as well, mm. or anything that's probably takes... why smokers smoke. When you mm. control your breathing, you. I, don't know, I think you'd relieve stress. I and think. anything yeah, that takes really focus good. away mm. from whatever's going on, like any kind of stress you're under, anything that you have to think, like, for example, spearfishing, you can't really afford to not be thinking about exactly what you're doing at that time. And that's what's meditative about it. I because don't know, just... if you've got other worries going on, mm. they're in the back of your mind because you have to be so focused on what you're doing. So extreme sports are really great for that, definitely. Mm. You haven't tried free diving yet, though, and I'm a bit nervous about that. Mm. To me, free dive, okay, you know, there is a difference, but it kind of is the same thing. But free diving, obviously, you don't have your gun and you, you're trying to go down as deep as you can. But for me, um, I don't know, spearfish is a bit more fun. It's like, it's yeah, like free diving. Like a sport. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I think spearfish is purposeful. like free diving for Call of Duty. You get to hold a gun, <laughs> you're stalking around the rock, trying to shoot stuff. <laughs> you know, it's just way more interesting. It's way, it's, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> dangerous but also providing but also yeah it's it's, it's yeah. all in one kind of thing yeah no, difficult though there's not many yeah it's, it's a great it's like an unlimited amount of free protein so <laughs> perfect yeah exactly yeah, fish, yeah. but the yeah. funny thing is in the summer our routine is i spearfish almost every day yeah and um i lose complete track of time oh there. yes he does <laughs> so i come back like super chill and then laura's got this face on her like, like i've <laughs> been stuck with the kids but, but um we have the, the um, i would highly recommend anybody who um doesn't can't drive a tender because that's the thing with me i can't drive the tender no the you tender. don't you i can. don't i can't no i can't if mean, anyone's ever seen us um on no, yeah i don't think you saw the channel five series that we were on my new greek life but they did they had this little like scene where they happened to manage to catch us learning me learning to drive a tender I was teaching Laura how to and uh tender. i was just a total wreck i was like it's going i'm putting it that way and it's going that way and, <laughs> yeah, and like i didn't know what i was doing Oh, I was a total, yeah, I was a complete yeah. train wreck, just like when I did my driving lessons. So Don't going, put me in a car. I'm pushing either. this way, but it's turning. I'm, I'm like just better off not driving anything. <laughs> I can drive a, a, a pedal bike, and that's about it. But mm. so when you when you're stuck on a boat, and you know, you, it's nice and calm. It's not too windy or whatever. Is a canoe like my canoe has been the absolute <clears> godsend. <throat> Someone actually gave it to us. Like um, inflated, a, not, inflated like a kayak. Yeah. It's, it's a Hudson, Carol. yeah. They, I think they're called and that was John in Rose, and Carol. Actually, yeah, in, uh, Rose. they were just okay. getting rid of some stuff, and it's like an eight, seven or eight foot um, Hudson canoe, and they gave it to us. 
and it's big enough for me and both the boys. I can oh, go and do the shopping well in it. Yeah, yeah. So if he goes off spearfishing, I don't feel so isolated and I don't like being out of control. I don't like feeling like if I wanted to get somewhere, you know, like I felt, we used to yeah, feel very like stuck a family that only got one car. Like someone yeah, to, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and um, and I can't drive on the other side of the road either, which is what you can, what you have to do in Greece. So, yeah. <laughs> She's saying she can't. She could. Don't want to. She just doesn't. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I'm I love my. I'm not asking Fred to do anything. <laughs> I still, I still, even though we're in in the marina now, I still go and get the shopping on the canoe. You like I canoe the exercise. over to the town and do it. But Laura, like. If she can go from A to B and exercise at the same time. Yeah, I'm awesome. winning, so, winning. Yeah. But um, as well, that feeling like when you've been in, in the marina for a long time, tied up with ropes and everything, and you don't get that free feeling that you get when you're sailing, get on a canoe and push off and you've got it. It's yeah, there. 100%. You know, you, get, you feel it again. You're like a one with the sea again. Same with surfing. Like we used to surf, didn't we? Back in the UK. Similar feeling. You just, ah. <sighs> You know, I've, never, I've, ne- I've never ever watched about it because in so in the south of Spain, there's when you get I think it's south winds, but when you, I think it's south winds, when you get south winds, all the surfers come out because you get like four meter waves just crashing on the beach. So all the surfers do that, and it's one of those things that I've looked at because they they do a lot in uh, I think it's Cornwall or um, oh yeah, that's where we're from. That's where we're from. Yeah, New oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So I uh, I had, I had like girlfriend when I was a, like a teenager and her. Um, I, th- I think she went to university there, so all of her friends were there. So we used to go and like, visit sure, her friends. Probably. And um, yeah. Falmouth. Falmouth. Falmouth, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, so they used to go to like this um, surf uh, surf resort around there where all the surfers were. And I always looked at it. I was like, that's something that I never, ever want to do. But I can understand why people do it for the sense yeah. of freedom. Like, you just oh, cruise it amazing. Away. Same like sailing. Like, what I like about it so much is you just, you've been powered by the earth. Like, I want to get yeah. out of the beam and the wind is going to take yeah. me. That's like, it's incredible it's, to it's me. And it's no, the you, you would, yeah, and I think actually, having said that, I think you would really love, I think you would love surfing if you did give it a go because the, you don't once. have to be in, oh, <laughs> well, it does do take it. a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, honestly, yeah. it does. If you, get, if you have I, a longboard. I windsurfing lesson once and that ended up horrible. Well, oh, it just no. ended up me being wet constantly. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I didn't like windsurfing. <laughs> But if you, if you were on, like, say, a long board, like a really big board, and you need yeah. only need to be in, like, one, two foot waves, and what that feeling when the wave picks you up and the power of the swell behind you that pushes you along, it is something else, isn't it? It's mm. magical. Totally magical. I, I think you should give it another go. <laughs> no, I will. I think if we end up in a place, where, like, not here, because the, the, even in, I think even in summer, the water's, like, 16 degrees, so it is still chilly. Oh, really? it's, yeah, it's never like yeah. nice. But um, I'm, oh, what, 17 stone? I'm like 105 kilos, so like finding a board <laughs> that I can stand on and it doesn't just longboard. start wanting to collapse you know, yeah. from either yeah, side. The, the yeah, yeah, totally. A longboard and you the get place, really fast. The <laughs> place to learn if you ever get there is Australia. Um, in Noosa, yeah. they have they have a way there that is oh, just so so easy and you get such a long ride. Mm. It's um, a really tea, tea Tree that. Bay. Oh, amazing place. I did to yeah, in, um, we lived in Dubai for like quite a while and they've got a... Uh, it's like a water park where you have the fake wave, you know, like you jump oh, yeah. and you're in this yeah. Oh, yeah. type of situation. And you know, like every, probably every day, there's just like one ridiculous middle-aged man who will just not give up and he just looks like an <laughs> absolute idiot. That was me every time I went. <laughs> and goes, like, Yeah, like people yeah. are looking, it's like, this guy doesn't look like he's 50 and he's had six kids, but he's surfing <laughs> like he looks like he's 60. He's like, oh, my <laughs> Lucky, yeah. That was terrible. Just like up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah. yeah I don't really think I'd like to, to go on one of them, though. They they look really painful, those they must ones. Be you don't have the, the water. Yeah, because you don't yeah. have... First, we don't have the swell pushing you along, so you don't get that feeling. And at the same time, you've got like that much water to fall have into. Have you ever been on one? It's like I haven't. Cushions. They are cushioned underneath. Oh, okay. Um, it's like when you go to the kids, some kids play areas. Soft they, play. Yeah, kind of like that. It's similar to that. So yeah. when when you drop, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt. It's not comfortable, but it, it doesn't hurt. Bumps. Yeah, but if you do it like fifty times in a day, like yeah, you'll end up with bruises yeah. on your legs. Yeah. <laughs> and it, not quite the same as hitting a reef, probably. That would no, be it's gotta probably be a bit more painful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got to be easier than that, yeah. 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 No, So you, uh, what, both of you did surfing? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you yeah, were so. more sea, sea kayaker. I was um, 
surfing for many years, living in Cornwall. Um, I don't like met, surfing anything big on six foot. I'm, you like, I like sea kayaking, don't you? I think that's it's like say, like with sailing, you have racing and cruising. Mm. With surfing, I just like nice waves, not mean yeah, waves. Yeah, I'm the same yeah. as well. I do it to relax, yeah. not to not to get like scared. <laughs> no, yeah, that's to be right. But, yeah. um, well, it's the same yeah, like sailing. Yeah. Like if if there's if there's gusts and there's waves, I'm just not interested yeah. in going out. Not I'm fun. Like, that's, yeah, no. it's just not pleasant. Like wife's yeah. going to be throwing up, baby's going to be like rolling around. Yeah, all the place. Like, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a level. There's a certain point where you go, not today, not yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're not we're not into into that, but um, yeah, you were outdoor instructor for a while, weren't you? So Ross a year, can yeah. climb, do all these kinds. It's great with oh, ropes, nice. actually, because obviously that, do you know what you're a rope climber work for a long not, time. That was one what of the best things. What type of climbing yeah. do you do? Like, oh, I, do I, I don't climb anymore, but um, okay. I was doing I was doing a bit of lead climbing. You know, okay. Yeah, resource. kind yeah. of given and snowboarding as well. So before sailing, we were. Travel. We travelled a lot. Like we, I, I mean, before Ross, I've travelled all over the world. Ross has done quite a lot of travelling as well. And then with the boys, we've travelled here, there, and everywhere. And we've always sort of our ethos has always been just because we got kids doesn't mean we can't do it. And we no. just we made we made we made the, the children part of our life. We didn't change our life for the. Do you know what I mean? Like we yeah, yeah. we carried them through with what we love to do because at the end of the day, if you're not doing what you love, you're not happy, are you? And if you're not yeah. happy, how can you be a good parent? So that's kind of the way we've always tried right, to view it. For me, the kids were probably one of the biggest motiva- motivational factors for doing this. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking they're they're at this age where <clears> they're they're not too young that you have to worry about them all the time falling in the water. I mean, they yeah. both fall in the water on one occasion. They've both been fine and swam. They're good swimmers, you know? yeah. Um, but they're not too old that, you know, you kind of reckon their teenage social life as well. You yeah, know? It was, yeah. It was just a good good it, time it to do it. It was a good age. Yeah. And, um, um, so, yeah, we've always done, carried on our lives with the children and been into, you know, like um, extreme sports, I suppose. So, I, although yeah, I don't, yeah, it's extreme in a way. It's not, yeah, it's not well, it's not actually, not kite surfing though. I was terrible at that, absolutely terrible. And I'm terrible at snowboarding. No, <laughs> I'm the was. one. I can ski. Well, I'm the I one at the, at the side of the piece like this, like shuffling down, like with <laughs> fogged up glasses, crying my eyes out. I can't mm. do this. Ross is like really good, then he's next to me, going, "Come on, you can get down. You can get down." We, um, I'm like first, shaking. No, I can't I, do any oh, of yeah, it. I can't ski either. I have, okay. I, have a, I have an issue with um, the height of it. But you know, like when you're looking down over a piece, and like, just, can't I've got a fear of heights. To, to leaning forward. Yeah, it's the committing thing. Yeah. And so, both holidays we've ever been on together, snowboarding, the the blue runs were shut when we. Well, no, there. the the first mm. holiday was in Austria. I'll just yeah. say it quickly, but um, it was a place where I always used to go boarding. I have a lot of mates there, and. It's, awesome sort of snowboarding scene but they're all they all start at red runs and that's where laura started and it just didn't wasn't working at all um, <laughs> so then we went to savinia in italy where they have lots of blue runs and oh, no. we had like three a meter, meters of snow meter, in something like 12 hours a meter in like two days mm-hmm. every i love how you said a meter i said three yeah, it looked like three no, it was a lot but um Everything was shut for the first day because of avalanches and everything else. And yeah. then they opened this run, and it was it was um, it was blue. The, so I said, "Laura, you're fine. This is going to be really easy." And we get down it, and I see this rope going across where halfway across this blue run, diverting you onto the red one. And I managed to <laughs> get around without telling her. Yeah, so I didn't know. And she she then we're now going down a red run. We're all like happy, cruisy, well. all the rest of it. And, we get halfway down the road. I think, oh, I think to myself, she doesn't know. It's fine. It's all good. And then she stopped. And then she goes, <laughs> why are the poles red? <laughs> and that was it. That was it. I was, I was like, on my ass. And I wasn't going anywhere. Do I, was like, I can't yeah. do it. And, and for four days, I had eyes like golf balls. Luckily, we picked a hotel with a spa. Oh, yeah. That was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And this is why I think when we're sailing and we're in big waves, or it's the lean, you know, when you got the lean, um, and someone once commented on our channel to say that women, it's like scientifically proven that women don't like a lean 
more than oh, like uh, it, over 30 degrees. <laughs> this is I don't know, I don't know if it's true. Like some I've, had some, I, I've had some backlash for saying that before. There was uproar when I said that someone said it. In, no, this in, in person a, said it in a reassuring way. Yeah, so, yeah, like right, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe it's an actual fact. I don't know. I think it probably is a fact because I felt it. But um, I think he was trying to make you feel better. Yeah. Unfortunately, his comment got taken out of context on, yeah, on, on um, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, on a Facebook There group. are all these people saying that's sex. Was really people are going mental. I think when any man on Facebook, Facebook starts talking about female brain programming, they're probably going to be quite Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I can't, I, to be honest with you, I support it <laughs> because I did not... I think yeah, you have to have a lot of more guts We're, than I've got. But... That's what I mean. When the boat's doing this, and we're even, you know, we could be planing along, and Ross is like, "This is amazing sailing. We're going so fast. The sails are perfect." But I'm literally white knuckling it just yeah. because of the height of looking down. So we, you know, you know, to set the sails like. But we last <laughs> year. I mean, we it's, a, it's all a learning curve. We're, yeah. We started off new, and we're learning slowly. But You're la- last slowly. season, Laura um, was on this one particular sail, I had all the sails out and it, it got from 15 knots up to about 28. And I really should have reefed before, but um, Laura, we were you know, healing over quite a lot. And Laura was like a cat clawing on the- you know, <laughs> I think that was on this bit and it, and it was down that side. And I'm like literally like feet against this table. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I got Laura more involved and you I got you to help me with the ropes and yeah, when she was starting to do me. the winches and, and let some of the sail out and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, maybe it's a I control was, thing, you know, like when I was doing stuff and I was actually part she, of she the process. Fine. Yeah, and you, I, you saw the boat lean. I felt know. like I was I had some form of control. Um and that I guess that's what it is really. I, I don't like being out of control and, and especially with the children, it's it's that whole other level isn't it, of responsibility. Where if it was just me and Ross sailing, I'd probably be way more relaxed. But because I'm so aware that we've got children under our care, I, mm-hmm. everything is in heightened. Your senses are in heightened. You, I you think. feel a little out of control because you don't know how to do everything mm-hmm. yet. Yeah, if you're so, Josh is funny though. Really well, yeah. the thing well, is, though, you've got two young boys. They probably won't give a damn. Yeah. They're probably like, oh, we're going no, they're they're oh, they're, they're, they sort Laura out. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're Josh, the ones our that, oldest one. Laura's down, mm. sometimes we've had a couple of rough sails and Laura's been down there crying Freaking her eyes out. out. <laughs> I'm really having to control the boat on my own. I can't be talking to her, steering, no. doing the ropes, I doing the sails. <laughs> so Josh does what I would do and he sits there with Laura and says, don't worry, that noise is just the Genoa being felled in. He's reefing the sails <laughs> oh, so that we don't awesome. lean this over so much. And, and he's saying, so don't worry, you know, Daddy knows what he's doing, but nothing to worry about. He, he reassures her. This is yeah. when he was seven? Yeah, this is like the first, <laughs> when our first really cool. season. Yeah, he's lovely. Yeah, he's really so, cool. so, so sweet like that. But also, at the same time, if Josh gets seasick, because he's basically the, the only one of us, you'd get a little bit, but mainly Josh. If he gets, if anyone gets seasick, it's Josh. He gets so angry with you, doesn't he? When we finish the sale, and if Josh has been seen, like, he's yeah. like, Daddy, why did you do that to me? Why did you make the boat do that? Like, he, like he's got zero control. And I do the same. If it's been a rough ride, I am in the worst mood with you for, like, two or three hours, aren't I? Because as if it's all his fault that the sea did what it did. That's fair. It is. Yeah, we, you get the blame. We had a sail where it's supposed to be 10 knots. If you look at the beginning of our intro, there's a... Uh, just a quick shot of um the, the bow just going up like two meters oh yeah and um we were in oh this is like 28 again uh, this is it this is grease and windy for you so yeah. you, you plan to go have a nice sail at 10 knots all your sails out you know it's probably gonna be 15 or something and this was 28 again and josh was really angry with me yeah, uh, like like i you know didn't look at the weather and everything else but, mm, uh, yeah like why didn't you check you promised me it'd be a nice you do sale. underplay yeah. things though if ross says it's going to be a bumpy ride you need to get your life jacket on and strap in <laughs> and everything because he likes to opinion of what a bit of bumpy it, ride is haven't yeah, it? yeah he's always done that for me even when we didn't have a boat it was it was you know oh, it, it, it won't take it won't take long it'll take about six hours to get there and you triple it the Everything he is, says, triple it. I'm sure there's every skipper can say this. You look at the weather, you look at six different weather, you know, predictions. Yeah. And you you don't really know 100. percent You you've got an idea, especially mm. if you've just checked it like an hour ago. You're not going with your gut, haven't you? Really, you time. you have to go and stick your nose out, and then you know you sort of look then. at it and go. Yeah. But I just, I do think that we, we've turned around what 
two or three times. Yeah, totally. Where I've well, said, no. you know what, no. But the rest of the time, it's been fine. It's been yeah, fine. it always works out right. But I think yeah. in future, it would be wise to maybe overplay things. Like if you said it's going to be so rough or uh, I, you know, ban down the hatches, then I'll just be pleasantly surprised. <laughs> but then you'll <laughs> always to go out. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. true, actually. Yeah, because yeah. you probably wouldn't get me out there. And I'd be like, right, I'll yeah. see you later. I'm going back on land. I'm gonna, I'll be work. in the apartment over the hill. You'd get back to the <laughs> yeah. boat, Ross would be like, oh, you know, we're going, but it's going to be rough. It's going to be really bad. You're like, well, yeah. we're not going. We're staying. But what's <laughs> the point? Why are we even going then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. The funny thing is, though, what Laura thought a year ago was rough. So they ain't fine rough at Now, all. she's yeah. just... Oh, the, the, I'm, the I'm doing yoga on yeah, deck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I've um, what was it? I did um, I did a workout while we were going along. I I could do anything now. I could bake a cake, do a workout, do a yoga flow on deck. You name it. But um, not any. Obviously, not in anything. It's got to be good conditions. But that's just reminded me of um, we crossed a really scary passage oh, Amorgos, Amorgos you know passage. About Amorgos, but... well it's the it's the notorious one in Greece that you have yeah. to go through to get from Kiklades to the Dodecanese and it's notorious for being big waves rough. really rough very high Strong winds yeah. and um the first time we crossed it we had a hell of an experience and it really scared me and that was the first long probably long trip we'd done but then this year we had to cross it because we had a medicane coming across mm. from oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you know that big medicine that came over in October? And we had that behind us. And we, we, we were stuck in the Kikladis. And we were like, if we don't go, then we're, well, we, we're basically going to be in the Medicaid, So The Medicaid ended up going south, but we didn't know if it was going to Yeah, we weren't sure over. where it was but going. We were in Corfinissi, which isn't a good place to be in a medicine. No, I, no, I, really I don't think anywhere would be. But. So um, we made the call to go, but actually the Medicaid kind of sucks the whole Meltini all, all into the Ionian. So there was there was no wind and I had to motor it was yeah two knots unbelievable and it was this notorious Glassy. stretch which must be you know over a meter between one and six meters high you know throughout the summer yeah it was like a mill pond it was incredible <laughs> I was like this is this must be yeah. a handful of days like and this. and the whole week leading up to it I was not sleeping I was stressing I was well, because of the first experience poorly. Yeah, I was so mm -hmm. scared and then when it actually came to the day it was like glorious it just shows anywhere can be bad i mean if when we talked about the journey from england to here but the two places i was really nervous of was the bay of biscay and yeah. the gibraltar straits near you yeah. and for <clears> me <throat> those two were were fine mm. if you Both, them right uh, the, the, the nice yeah the gibraltar yeah. straits yeah. the current yeah. but we had it behind us was oh insane. it's got to be behind you it's easy you we were doing no, it was like 11.7 knots. So I don't know what the current <laughs> is, but it was it was crazy. It's not the things um, you think you need to worry about that you need to worry about. <laughs> yeah, it? It random gusts are the worst thing. Like a random gust, oh, yeah. you know, on the nose and a, and a big wave on the beam. That'll mm. knock your boat way mm. further than, like, you know, a, a current oh, in the yeah. water straight mm. towards. So I, sure. I think it's the feeling of being in control, like... I, you know, I remember like when I was uh, oh, in my twenties, we did like one of these team building things at work. You know, like they take the whole office who all hate each other and they try to get them to make friends by you know going in a play area for a few hours or something. It never works. <laughs> anyway, yeah, trying to organise fun. Yeah, hmm. let's try and get them to not hate each other by sending them <laughs> somewhere. So they sent us on. Um, uh, right, okay, so it was this facility where you know I like call it McRae. What type of racing? Is, rally racing. Like the, the cars, Do you know. Oh yeah, you used to get the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, they're in like a Ford Focus that's just been turned into a, a turbocharged machine. So and and you know they drive around the forests really fast and stuff. So they took us to one of these um, facilities where they do these World Championship rally races. Yeah. And to start off with the experience, it, it was the British team. So you got in a car with one of the British drivers for the national team. <gasps> they take you around this rally. Yeah. It was the most terrifying experience of my life. So you're sat in the uh, of like this Ford Focus that's doing 200 miles an hour on dirt. And you head <laughs> to the tree. And like at the yeah. last minute, they'll slam on the brakes and you'll literally miss the tree by inside. Turn sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's they drift normal. Them, yeah. And they, for them, it's like, oh no, this, this is like the practice run. You're like, oh yeah. my God, like <laughs> shitting yourself is the start of what's going to go yeah. wrong here. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and it was horrendous. And then the second one, they were like, right, you do it. And but you, you're doing like 90 miles an hour in second gear, and it's <laughs> insane. But because you've got the wheel, 
you're fine. You're fine. And you're like, no, mm. I know there's a tree there. So if I want to break a second before he tells me, mm. I can. And it's the same yeah. with sailing. Like, if you know, mm. like, okay, if, if a gust comes, just go and whip the main off. Like, just take power out of the main yeah. and you find it's done. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're not really scared about it. You know, you're prepared for everything. Whereas, yeah, like Definitely. Laura, maybe because you don't know as much about sailing. Yeah. Well, look, funny enough, exactly I what you just said. That's what now. Laura did. So yeah. You, In the first year, I was very, very nervous. But you, mm. you did all, you're not knowing me. Mate, you took all the power of the main cell and made yeah. it inefficient, so mm. we slowed down. And um, but this year has been very, very different. This last season. That's what I'm saying. Sorry, <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Catch up. So this year you've been doing I'll a drink. lot. You've been doing a lot more. Yeah. And yeah. And, and now I feel like when we're sailing, I feel like I'm part of it, and I'm at one with the boat. And you know, our anchor drops pretty, <clears throat> pretty nailed now, aren't they? We, you're, we, you're good at I, that, I understand the ocean. I understand the winds. I. She knows where to I, look on the sea floor. She's like, no, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. She knows where and and the boys, are. they're fantastic. They know the rules, and they and they know why it's what is safe and what's not. They mm. they won't come off. We don't put them on deck without life jackets and clipped in. Um, so it's just been a learning process, a massive, massive learning process. But we've we've got, I think, every every parent and every skip has his own rules. But for us, if the sails are out, they're clipped on. It doesn't matter mm. what's going on. If we're motoring like into a bay and it's flat calm, like they can unclip. Mm. They've got the life jackets on still, you know. Yeah. yeah. And then when we're at anchor, we keep an eye on them, but they don't have to wear life yeah. jackets. So. Mm. But I tell you what, though, I'm worse than a cut. And actually, what now we go on land? You know, we were saying about um ner- being nervous or not. I'm all now because nervous we're, on we're not used to being on roads very much. When yeah. we do hire a car and actually go on land, it all hell breaks <laughs> loose. Quick. It is yeah, not yeah. good. Ross is driving and he and he's just like na, 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 na. and I'm just sat there like going like thinking I'm so close to the wall. It, you get so used to having so much space around you when you live on a yeah. boat and even sailing, obviously you can't get very close to the next person. Yeah. That when you do suddenly get in the back of the car, you realise how confined life kind of is on Everything land. Speeds up, doesn't it? Yeah. Sailing, you have so much time oh. for everything. So miss a boat. Really, if you keep an eye on what's going on, you have plenty of time to yeah. read. Everything is slow. You know, you have a lot of time. Whereas in a car, you're, you know, yeah. everything's suddenly quick again. But also you get traffic. Well. Like, it's not the easiest place to drive. Right. Like, you'll be doing, you're driving around cliffs and roads where there's yeah. no ocean right at exactly. the side. Exactly. It's beautiful. It's stunning. Yeah. Well, we went, um, the, uh, the only real island that we've done much driving around is Mykonos. And Mykonos no. is... <clears throat> A very very because it's because it's not really very well set up sailing uh it's just a hard set anchor there um more so that there isn't many anchor gears um, the anchor gears aren't near the facility it's no silly. So you, you have they're like, all like beach bars yeah there's no car hire or sea towns a mile ocean, away yeah. i've only been there mm. on holiday so i've been oh, to the been. beaches and i can i, I, I okay. yeah i can understand what you're saying from a sailing yeah, perspective wherever you go to a nice beach it's actually a drive away from the town Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And the towns, because it's quite a small island, it's obviously quite compact. There's a lot of people mm. holidaying there. Mm. And there's just cars and just the and I think he's better on the sea than than on land. He's definitely suited I, because the road rage. Road rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Re- <laughs> I remember we ha- we had an amazing time in Mykonos, but there, there is actually a really funny vlog coming up about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, I ne- oh, I do. It's funny. We ne- we're nearly killing each other. It's so funny. It's on the internet. <laughs> I think, I think, you, know, you know when you use the camera to like silently snipe at, 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 at somebody, you're like, mm. Ross has been really fun today. Haven't <laughs> 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 you, Ross? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's the worst. Yeah, we weren't even speaking. Yeah, we're like vlogging to each other. It's so funny. But um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've re- definitely realised when we go on land for a while, we realise why we're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. we're, we're just not... in, like the, I, Spain, the, the thing is, like in the UK, and I, like, I've lived in quite a few places as well. The roads are so polite compared to literally mm. every mm. country in the world. Oh, Italy! What about Italy? Oh, oh that my is goodness! The worst place in Europe. Right? Uh, for driving. Yeah. For driving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. I love the country. It's beautiful. But yeah, yeah. I, mean, I remember. Because I used to go there a lot when I was a uh, teenager because like, we set up a business with this manufacturer in Italy. And it was the place where they made Ferraris. I can't remember the name of the um, 
Yeah, it was, it was a city near where they made Ferraris. Anyway, we got there. We got, got the hire car, got out, and like everyone's just beeping. I'm like, yeah, what are beeping for? This is so communicating. Weird. Like, this is not what we. Yeah. I'd like, yeah, like where are the traffic lights and like people are beeping when it's on red. I'm like, what? why? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I'm you that you're at a traffic light. Yeah. I know I'm at a yeah. traffic light. You know, like, <laughs> Morse code. I'm all angles as well. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Over here, they beep to say hello to everybody. But yeah, they are, it is constant, and because in the UK, if you get beeped, someone you know, really means it. Yeah, you've yeah. Done yeah. That's a serious yeah. offence to beep at someone. It's, they have to oh, be really yeah. Yeah. Over here, you, you look and you're trying to figure out what's going on, and they're just like, "Oh, hello." Yeah. Having a chat. Mm. I guess it, it maybe maybe <laughs> yeah. it's like the the road communication with beeping is similar to like um the personality perhaps of the person. Like British tend to be very reserved, mm. but when they go, they go. Do you know what I mean? Like we yeah. we we try try and skip off a little rest of it, but when you lose it, you kind of <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Italian Italy, Italians tend to be very true. you know flamboyant and and communicative, and very chatty. And Greeks are just super friendly, so you get the bee bee pie, you know. So yeah. it's yeah, it's sort of super. super. The Greeks aren't Australian afraid to shout each other either. I like Perfect. Australian roads. Wide. Yeah. Most, yeah, Euro- most Europeans. Back. Well, I don't know. Like, like the Northern Europeans tend to be a bit more reserved. But like, it's, it's yeah. compl- like any anywhere in the Mediterranean. Like, you're walking around town and you'll hear two people going at it. You'll be like, Jesus, what is happening? Yeah, yeah. yeah as an English person, you, know, you yeah, yeah. And then you end the line. Oh, no, it's, yeah, it's all good. I think it's it's that it's that not being afraid to have a have an it's expressive and have yeah. a row and get over it. Whereas, um, yeah, yeah, that. The, the love is always going to be there. You can have the row, yeah. but the love will always be there. We've got we've got a visitor actually. So if it's You're okay, right. Noah's I'm here. It's just human, human. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, the the cat. I don't know where the cat is. The cat is everybody's cat. Every sort of is like a bit of a tart, basically. Right. <laughs> the, the, sort of the cat, by the way. Anyone the neighborhood cat. Watching or listening? <laughs> yeah, he's called sort of because he won't. Right. Hello, young man. Oh, Noah's brought some mud on the boat. Joy. Oh, that's nice for the parents. I'll take that. Oh, you need to see Yeah, I think they've been doing it in beach school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have done you have nice well, there, there are seeds in there, but the pea seeds are very big. They're big, are they? Oh, well, mustn't take it out because it won't grow. You have to leave the seed in there and then you have to water it every day. Yeah, and then we're going to have to get a nice big stick for the peas to go up and it's going to have to go across something. Because <laughs> peas grow like this, don't they? Like, yeah, I was about to say, it would be nice to have like a, like a yeah. bead type of canopy on your bimini or something yeah. like that. I've probably never seen so that might- before. Might have a giant at the top of it. You can be Jack and climb the climb the beanstalk. Oh, like, oh, James and the Giant yeah. Peach is Noah's yeah. Noah's latest oh, yeah, that was uh, obsession. The audio book, though, he'll listen to it like three times a day, and it's two and a half hours long. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a Roald Dahl film coming out soon. I can't remember what it. I'm sure they're releasing another one. You can't hear anything, can you? Because you've got earpods on. Yeah, I'm talking to him, but he doesn't he can't hear me. <laughs> you want to go downstairs? What do are you going to do? Stuff? What do you want to do? Uh, have you had food? I think in this snow, I think you can. Come on then. Is it past three o'clock? We have a bit of a, we have a watershed for iPads. So mm. because obviously they learn on them for like an hour or so in the morning. And then we have to kind of like keep their mental energy for schooling. Mm. We don't let them have iPads for games until three o'clock and it's quarter yeah, three. So that's, but that's but also, yeah. because of the lockdown here, we, we can't go out and do anything in the town or anything. So yeah. we've um, got Disney for them on the iPads. Oh, and it's going to go That's, that's been a yeah, Oh, Disney, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Disney, good brilliant. One? Oh, it's, they've got every, you know, all the ones we used to watch, well. but all the new ones. It's every single Disney yeah, thing. Yeah, Because yeah. there's Star, Star Wars like, is on there as well, like. Yeah, yeah. Mm. All the Star Wars stuff, Marvel stuff. Mm. The and, only um, thing they don't have. Oh, here we go. Every parent, every parent knows this one. Can you turn the Wi-Fi on? <laughs> but um, 
the only problem we the only thing we we're really really have to care about is uh online gaming because josh uh, you have to sort the wi-fi out okay <laughs> i'm like technology is, is not my department this is not <laughs> this is not my department i don't even know how to do those things but but yeah online gaming because um josh specifically um he has adhd and um suspected spectrum autism but we never got that diagnosis back in the uk so we left before we got that specific side of things and so you have to be a if you have to actually do those tests and get conclusive results yeah yeah. Well, he he was diagnosed with ADHD at six, I think it was, just before we left. And then right. he was kind of like, it, we were talked to the school to get a diagnosis for autism. But to be honest with you, it uh, you know, you can read up about it and he's definitely somewhere on the spectrum. But we once we knew what we were dealing with, it was like, cool, fine, let's go. Let's, you know, work out how to how to make life as, le like, com not comfortable, but... Um, <laughs> A learning experience for him and we were able to give him one-to-one -one schooling which mm. the schools in the uk actually said the best thing for josh would be to have one-to-one -one 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 schooling they, and they yeah. couldn't do it in the school they didn't have the facilities to do it but anyway that's that's a whole other story the, what i was saying is that with online gaming because if you have an overactive mind so you get um verbal overactivity overactivity physical overactivity and it's like you have an excess of all this energy Online gaming is like catnip to a child that has yeah. sensory um, so whilst, problems. So whilst he loves it and will sit there for oh, as long as he could. Oh, he could sit there all day. He, he's in a bit of a state after this. Oh, he's a mess. Like mentally, his brain is just going on overdrive. Yeah, so like we don't... Yeah. It's like, yeah. you're giving a kid too many skills. You know? Yeah, it really is. It's like <laughs> e-numbers for the brain. E-numbers yeah. e online. But... Um, so there are certain things that we really try to not have. And to be honest with you, we were just saying earlier on that if we have like a, a, a bad patch where they're being a bit, you know, playing not up a little bit, we'll take away the iPads for a weekend or a few days and strip it right back to basic drawing and painting, just real simple stuff. And that they, they are the most yeah. well behaved they've been. And they're really happy. Mm -hmm. And they, they even have a better relationship with us. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's that whole yeah. human contact. And also I think when it, when a human is has its um is stripped of its maybe like luxuries, you really don't when you when you've got less choice, you get you it's less stress because you, well, don't you have get so less, much to think you get about. more satisfaction out of simpler things yeah. as well. Exactly. That's, we that's just did we just did a yes day. Oh, in fact, we oh we did. Days. I don't know if you know what yes it is, but it's where you say yes to your kids all day. All day. But first of all, <laughs> you, you have you have I was you nervous. Have, you yeah. have a parent yeah. This is the way you do it, right? You this have a parents yesterday, the day before. So we and if they don't do the, yeah, we did the Saturday parents yesterday. So if they didn't say yes to everything we said all day on the Saturday, so we got like the easiest day ever, then they wouldn't get the yes thing on the Sunday. And so, so that right. set the precedence. So for, you said no I can see it. You did. And they were like, What? So you've got to say yeah. Okay. That was so, like the backup. So they yeah. had this like no technology day, and they we, we didn't do horrible things. Oh, we played Scrabble we nice and stuff. played poker. That we love poker. Yeah, <laughs> really good. And at then poker. they got there yesterday, and it was like, um, what's it? Roblox, or it's online On, game an online stuff. game that we let them have it. Half a day of Wi-Fi and iPads, and then the others just we didn't pick stuff outside, but. I, in my opinion, we, did a we had a better day on our yes. They, so they had a better day on our yesterday. And Josh actually said to me the day after, he said, Mummy, I really enjoyed my yesterday yesterday, but I have to say that apart from the fact that I got online gaming, I really preferred the sat Saturdays yesterday. He actually <laughs> yeah. preferred it more because we, we played games together well, and we did, routine, like, yeah, we did loads of family stuff yeah. and we did do um, a science experiment on there yesterday, though. We got we did the whole Coke bottle with the Mentos thing. You know, you can, like, there we buried it, an open Coke bottle in, in some so. pebbles on the beach, and then we're creating a volcano. But you've got to use Coca-Cola, not Pepsi, because it didn't really work that well. It, it didn't Pepsi. explode. Apparently not. It was a well, disappointment. It did, yeah, someone, I, mean, <laughs> I, 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 I filmed I it on it Instagram. Like a fizzy drink. I didn't know that. It was literally yeah. Coca-Cola. I yeah. don't know if they've changed all those ingredients to when it was yeah, whatever chemicals yeah. are in there. I, well, yeah, it, it, it wasn't 
In fact, I think it would have been almost as good as if you just shook up the bottle and opened it. Yeah, I did an, I did an, I did an Insta story thing on it and somebody commented and said that it's because you, we didn't use Coca-Cola. So that's correct. Oh, yeah. so we're going to do it again next time. But we're going to do it once a month now because I think as parents, especially for those guys, like they live with us 24 seven. Mm. They constantly have their parents saying yes or no, right? So where's their freedom? You've got to give them like, everyone needs a lid off the pressure of being good, don't they? You know, And so to give them a yes day once a month makes sense because they get that feeling of like, I can say, yeah, I can say what I want now or I can do what I want. And I think it's just important for them to have, you know, that well, freedom really cool it's like you gave them a day before where they they have to do everything that you want to do and yeah. they approached you afterwards and were like actually when you tell us what we need to do we actually have more fun yeah so it's like yeah, yeah let's let's just spend do more what time you want to do all the time mom and dad really yeah nice. and, and i think <laughs> because we had planned a yes day for us and a yes day for them it was the both of us we were like oh what can, we, what can i do what, what, do, I work? what mm. do i work and none of it was all our jobs it was no jobs no routine it was just no work no working out no mm. online um, for us like editing or your work it was it basically was, it was just basically not two having days off pressure. and i yeah. think that was actually good for us that's what it was it was just two days off yeah and i think you know that's important and also josh um josh wrote a list a yesterday list like i i let them both have a piece of paper and a Oh, something's going on. And a, an aeroplane? When does that happen these days? Um, we, I gave them a pen and paper and a list. I said, guys, write yourself a list on your yesterday of what you wanted. And it was such a beautiful thing that Josh wrote Roblox and a bacon sandwich. And that's all he wanted. Like, you get children living in modern day culture who are like, in the Western world, who are like, for Christmas, ticking every box in the Argos. Um, catalog or yeah. you know these thousands and thousands of pounds like they've never been the kind of kids that that, that ask for much mm. because just a bacon I don't know. yeah mm. simple pleasures you know yeah, that's true. and that's something that'll really cool. get them through life i think so yeah, yeah. but uh yeah I think we, actually sailing has done that for us we're very minimalistic we like that just lot. essentialism very really. yeah we're, um, definitely that's what i love about sailing though consumerism lifestyle it does absolutely it, 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 it's just not around you yeah and, and it's yeah. it's not healthy either like if you like because you've immersed yourself in like this minimalist like living off the grid type of lifestyle now you can look mm. from the outside back in oh totally and, like the uk is kind of the, the uk is kind of bad but it's not terrible but like if you look at the states for an example where it's just like oh, kind of corporatism and consumerism mm. on steroids it's like oh every mm. month there's the new this you have to get the new drinks mm. you have to get a new computer it's like oh. it's pretty it's pretty poisonous it's but wasteful like, you, is the way i see it you know, materials yeah. wise you know yeah, if you're getting new wasteful. trainers every month what what i I mean, we still live in the same clothes we were living in two years ago. And in fact, if I get new clothes, it's normally because someone's donated some to me. You know, we, we're, it's functionality, isn't it? Your life becomes purposeful. Like you wear clothes for purpose and you wear, like I can't remember the last time I went, I went shopping for clothes or anything really other than maybe mascara. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's the difference. Yeah. From the from the, ex, from, from yeah. external factors, you get... Yeah nature gives you everything you need mm. and we're it, definitely, oh, it's such a, it's definitely so happier yeah and we've actually traveled a bit as well and some of the third world countries we've been to mm. they actually you look at the families there they actually look happier than mm. the oh, western yeah. world in my opinion they're happy they like they as well yeah 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 so it almost sort of that kind of proves the point yeah. doesn't it the more sort of um technology you know um what the, what the, the more you have the more you want yeah, and I think it, mm. it makes you less happy. You know? Yeah, obviously you need the, the the essentials. Like we we have to eat. We have to. We I think that is probably our our luxury. If there's ever a luxury, <laughs> is food. We just love food. Like we're real foodies. Especially when it's a fish. Not fancy. We just like a barbie, <laughs> a barbie, and a good loaf of bread and a nice salad. That's all. But yeah. we lo there's nothing better than a full fridge. For me, that yeah. I'm happy if the fridge is full, and and so obviously we have to work and we have to keep the, the boat afloat. But yeah. other than that, we we don't really want for much. But also, like guessing the food. Obviously, I like spearfish, but over here it's all kind of what it's like when I was growing up, where you 
there's no big supermarkets. You have to go to the fruit and veg shop. You have to go to the butchers, old school bakery, mm. um, and you mm. meet all these different people, and you get to know them, and you have conversations yeah. with them. You know, Definitely. albeit poor Greek on my part, but um, <laughs> yeah, you you know we we know all the we know a lot of people in the yeah, shops yeah. and their businesses. You know, like was, here in Leros, there's uh, a, a, a specifically a chicken shop. So it's a shop just that just sells uh, chicken, roast and um, they've so got. Like no, 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 uh, like fresh just, chicken, like a butcher's, but just for chicken. And oh, they've right. got a okay. full... You'd be surprised yeah. how many ways you can cut up or do stuff do with chicken. chicken, yeah. <laughs> and they, they've got a... <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, they're a family-run business, and they've got a chicken farm with 4,000 free-range chickens on it up oh. in the hills in Leros. And, yeah, something comes from everywhere. It's really cool. Really, I, I love that about Greece as well. Uh, you know, there's not many big chains... Of no, I, I love it. It's, it's just, not in the it's islands. It's anyway, such a nice you know. place. I never understand. Mm. Like when you get people who like they start sailing or they start cruising, they'll like do a few years in the Mediterranean. They'll be like, "Oh, we've got to get to the Caribbean." I'm like, yeah. "Why would you need to go to the Caribbean if you haven't spent two years?" Everything you need. Yeah, yeah. right. Like, it's you got everything. Perfect perfect I think of like beauty. Yeah. And, if you if you want IKEA, you can go, but you know, it's, it's yeah. a, you have to go to Athens or whatever. Oh, you'll fly to Athens if you want. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, no, it's that, there. That, if that you is need so it. true. And every single yeah. island has a very different feeling to it as yeah. well. You would think they're all the same, and but history. they're not. Yeah, no, they're, they're completely they're all, different. They're all different. Some have similarities. Mm. Mm. Um, Maybe the foods, um, you know, the types of foods you can get, like the cultural foods, but every single island has an, its own little history. It's got its own mm. t- type of people. So much history. Yeah. Oh, it really is like like you were saying actually that's a really good point about um you know if you were in the Caribbean or sailing those areas which are absolutely stunning but maybe don't have every piece of the puzzle whereas I feel like Greece has literally every piece of the yeah. puzzle. I, I would love to go to the Caribbean. Definitely. But I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I think sometimes I'm I'm really bad for this. Sometimes you can always be looking forward to the next thing. Raining. Not living in the moment where you are, you know. And. Mm. There is so much to do in the Mediterranean, whereas from what I've heard about the Caribbean, once you've been to a few islands there, you kind of get a bit sane. Yeah, it's awesome. And then you've got Greece. a long way to go to come back from it. Yeah. So, yeah. Whereas yeah. here, you know, there's so much in Greece, but if we ever get bored of, you know, Greek life, mm. go over to Italy, go exactly. to Sardinia yeah. or, or Spain. They're all different. And I loved all the countries I passed from mm. England to here. Like, mm. I, I wish I could have spent years in all of them. <laughs> Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. so if you're a sailor and you like you like your history, especially when it comes to like real history, like the Greeks, the yeah. Romans, uh, even the I'm Egyptians, you can go to Egypt if you're in the in the bed. Um, oh, I'd love to go to Egypt. Oh, I mean, I I think that part of the world is like the most interesting. It's yeah, where, like, democracy yeah. was formed there. You know, mm. this, uh, empires that took over the world are from there, mm. and, and the. The sites where you know they gathered yeah. like, the Acropolis and the the amphitheaters and everything they're still there yeah. like it's amazing it's oh so yeah cool. and the archaeology the archaeology of Egypt is what yeah. uh, attracts me and 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 the you know like, all of that sort of um so many stories yeah like there's an island I forgot the name it's Sparma something it's a small island just off the west coast of where we are now in Laos mm. Mm. and uh, it was it Julius Caesar was captured by pirates there. And then held prisoner on this oh, island. Yeah. And, right. and he, he said who he was. He he said who he was. Mm. And the pirates, I think, believed him. And then um, the pirates all got Eventually. killed and he got free. Yeah. But, um, yeah. That happened just over there. I could almost swim to this island. I can literally crazy. point to Mussolini's house. I can see Mussolini's house from here as well. Yeah, so no the bay that we're in, in Leros, is, um, was. Um, the Italian naval base for Mussolini's troops oh, um, wow. in the World War. Yeah, so there is naval history and World War Two history everywhere you go. He's been like, in the bunkers. It's incredible. Um, and yeah, he, apparently Mussolini's house was there and Hitler had a house next door to him, didn't he? I'm not very good at the history. That's what so, someone told lot, me something about history. that. And there's tunnels all yeah. through the... Because um, Leros itself is an island that is just so well protected, mm. especially Lackey Bay. Uh, that even Hitler couldn't penetrate it in the World War. Like it, it's, it remained in Italian hands, and that's why you've got. It's pretty. It's called. They call it the weirdest island in Greece. That's what it's known for because it's because got it Greek. 
yeah, because of the because right. of the history, but also, but also the, buildings. the buildings. They're all Italian. Art Deco. Exactly. Right. There's, There's like an Italian side and a Greek side. But when you oh, when you say Elaine, you're like, am I in Greece? Yeah, it's so really I'm weird. Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine so. the poor Greeks who lived there prior to that, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, we've got new neighbours. Oh, yeah, suddenly, yeah. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> new neighbours. <laughs> and a whole new, um, like, yeah, landing of... <laughs> yeah. Where's all these boats come from, then? <laughs> yeah, there's a new customers yeah. at the shop. They're all Nazis. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the crazy thing, it's yeah. like, it, like, that wasn't so oh, long ago. Still. It was like 80 yeah. years ago, 70, 80 years ago, and it was like literally happening mm. in civilized countries. So, so yeah, that's what's amazing about the Mediterranean. Like, there's so much history there, and there's so much mm. stuff. Yeah. Mm.